thrill me. This show is part of the Thrill Me Podcast Network. Experience more on Facebook and YouTube. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Reveal Rob Show. I am your host, Reveal Rob, coming at you with the latest in news revolving DC Comics, the horror realm, and a fresh spoiler-free review for the film Smile, now streaming on Paramount Plus to go over with you, as well as other news and a tribute to a legend in my eyes coming later in this episode. Ah, man, dreading that one. Hope everybody out there has been doing good. Been a while since the last time we talked. Haven't been up to too much over here, <laughs> to be honest with you. Uh, still pulling some uh, stuff for that show. I uh, teased the uh, Stream It show. Um, it still has a name. It's changing its names like 15 times. I could change my dog's name. <laughs> um, you know, uh, I purchased a PlayStation 5 waiting for that to arrive. Actually should have gotten it today, but there's a mix-up with freaking mailing and blah, 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 blah. Nonsense that we don't need to worry about and, you know, in light of certain things, not the biggest um, deal going on in the world, but so excited to finally have a PlayStation 5, man. Um, other than that, yeah, not much going on. Just getting ready for, uh, some big things happening this week. We've got Survivor Series War Games happening this Saturday on Peacock, the WWE's new event. Uh, not really new event. It's their new take on a classic event, the Survivor Series. You'll have, uh, War Games introduced this year, which is fantastic, obviously. That is a Triple H thing that he has loved doing in NXT, a uh, classic bout from the old uh, WCW days. So it's great to see that coming back. And of course we have the show that I've been highly anticipating uh, finally debuting this week. That show I'm talking about, is, of course, is the Wednesday show, Wednesday Adam, starring the fantastic Jenna Ortega, directed by Tim Burton. We'll be hitting Netflix on the 23rd, man. So whenever you listen to the show, it may be coming out a day later. Maybe coming out the day you're listening to the show, maybe out already. <laughs> it all depends on when you're listening to the show, but uh, it is finally going to be here this week, and I'm so excited about that as a huge Adams Family fan and a fan of Jenna Ortega, man. So can't wait to check into that. I'll have some uh, fresh takes for you on next week's episode revolving that. But well, let's go ahead, and while we're talking about fresh takes, let's go ahead and jump into the spoiler-free review for Smile. You know the deal. I'm going to play the trailer here. And then I'll uh, return with my thoughts on the film. Check it out. What is it you like to talk about? My patient. Hi. I know you're nervous. I just want to have a chat. I'm seeing something no one else can see except for me. Smiling at me. No! Oh my God! No! Yesterday, a patient in your care died brutally in front of you. I need to find an explanation for what happened. Smiling at me. 
I found 20 cases involving 19 victims with a direct line linking them all together. You said only 19. Why is it that everybody else who's seen it is dead in your life? I've seen it too. You? Get her away from me! How long between each victim's death? None of them survived longer than a week. No! Today is my fourth day. I am not gonna keep running. I have to face it. How does it make you feel? I'm just really scared that something bad is going to happen. All right, welcome back to the show. That was, of course, the trailer for Smile, which I'm glad I did not watch that trailer before watching the movie here, because I haven't watched the trailer since seeing it uh, back in theaters before watching another movie. But, uh, yeah, glad I didn't watch that trailer beforehand. Didn't really spoil anything audio-wise, but, yeah, just giving away too many scenes. Anyways, the film is rated R. It can release earlier this year. It's a horror mystery thriller film running in at 1 hour and 56 minutes, and has mentioned before it is streaming on paramount plus I believe it's still in theaters as well um after witnessing a bizarre traumatic incident involving a patient dr rose cotter starts experiencing frightening occurrences that she can't explain uh there's more to the synopsis there but i'm going to stop it there because i think that's more than enough to sell it uh let's see rotten tomatoes critic and audience scores kind of uh, in agreement here critics have it at a 79 percent while audience have it just two percent below it at 77 percent well, IMDB has it at a 6.7 out of 10. So, what were my thoughts of Smile? Uh, so, yeah, my first thoughts um, with the film, when I saw the trailer for the first time, was like, oh, truth or dare. You know, that movie that came out a while ago, uh, the Blumhouse film? Like, the way the, uh, the people were smiling, that creepy eerie smile thing they have going on immediately reminded me of truth or dare which is a movie that um, you know some people like some people don't like uh, I'm, I'm kind of indifferent to the movie the more i've watched it i obviously enjoy it mostly because of my love for lucy hale uh, she's one of my favorite actresses but uh, the movie itself yeah however you want to take it uh so smile that was my first thought going into it i'm like oh it's truth or dare um they're doing another take on that, I guess. Well, we'll see how this one ends up going. Uh, of course, without the game of truth or dare being involved. Uh, which, you know, that's one of the things, obviously, you know, to differentiate between the between the two films if you want to compare them. Um, yeah, there's no game of truth or dare going on in this movie. But I will say, after watching Smile, hell of a double feature those two films back-to-back -back would be. Just, you know, interesting. And there's parallels between the two films that, you know, I won't go into for, you know, spoiler reasons, obviously. But, yeah, I could see, you know, uh, some similarities there. But, I mean, overall with the film, I think my favorite part of it was the mystery of it. Like trying, like following your character, following the Rose character throughout the film and, you know, seeing where things are going to go and trying to solve what's going on and making these bizarre, you know, events happening and these, you know, people with the creepy smiles and what's making it happen and where are we going with this and how are we going there and all that stuff. I enjoyed that. I liked the... Um, the menacing feel of it all, I think. I think they did a good job there. I mean, it runs at an hour and 56 minutes. I didn't feel that, you know? I, I didn't feel like a two-hour movie movie. Some people may say, you know, pacing was an issue with the film. I didn't run into that at all. I was, you know, again, into it. I was into the, the menacing feel of it all and the, the mystery of and thriller of it all. You know, trying to see where things are going to end up going and trying to figure out how the story would end up ending. Um, you know, circling back to Truth or Dare, and I want to keep comparing these two, but I think Truth or Dare's ending was... You know, I don't really hate the ending of Truth or Dare. I think it probably could have been handled better, but I don't really hate the ending. I get the ending of Truth or Dare. So I was wondering, if were we going to run into that kind of situation with this film or not? You know, and yada, yada, yada. And of course, they end up giving you a different kind of ending, but, you know, I, I think the film is good uh the jump scares are fine the uh, the again the 
the biggest appeal of it is the fact that they don't give away too much and you're kind of following along and trying to figure out what the hell is going on. You know, why why are these events happening? Then when you finally get to that point of explaining, you know, some of the things that are going on and giving you some kind of insight to it, you're like, okay. Uh, the imagery is creepy for sure. Um, you know, and all that. Now, I got some vibes from other horror movies in this movie as well. Um, mentioned Truth or Dare multiple times already. There's definitely some ring vibes to it, as you heard in the audio there, the whole... Uh, people normally die a week later, or she's like on her fourth day and all that stuff, and she's trying to do that. It's definitely a ring vibe to this movie for sure. There is, um, I had some Nightmare on Elm Street vibes while watching it. I also had some It vibes while watching it, the newer It vibes. Um, and if you've seen the movie, I hopefully you've picked up on that. If not, we'll gladly talk to anybody about it. But overall, I thought it was, you know, a fine film, and this, you know, this year has been really good horror-wise. Um, I, I don't, I don't know where the film's going to rank for me. I just got done watching it, obviously. Um, not that obviously, y'all didn't know that. <laughs> Sorry, my head's in a weird place right now. Um, but I, I, I did enjoy the film. Like, I, I think it was very well done. It's a solid film. It fits well with the year as far as horror movies have gone. Again, been a really good year horror movie wise. Uh, you know, I, do I put it ahead of Barbarian or Prey or X? Or, um, nope, I, I don't think so, uh, but I really, that doesn't mean I didn't enjoy it. It's just a very solid, solid year for horror films this year. But again, very good mystery thriller film. You know, you, you get some gore in there. Um, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head if it gets too gory, but, I mean, obviously nothing Saw-like, but. No, I don't think it got too bad. There's definitely some blood in the movie, but yeah, yeah, I don't think it gets too bad. It's mostly a mystery thriller film, which is perfectly fine. I think that fits. I think that fits this idea of a film more than anything, because it's, again, it's you know, it's dealing with trauma and frightening things, and you know, mystery and all that stuff. So I think that works fine with the film. I enjoyed it. I would definitely watch it again for sure. Again, streaming on Paramount Plus. If you want to give it a check out, but yeah, I. I I give it two. I give it. I give it a. I give it a thumbs up for sure. You know, it's it's a solid film. Yeah, definitely a solid film. So obviously we just talked horror movies, so we're gonna jump into DC news. Because <laughs> um, you know I like to do this show. I like to be. I mean, the the song says it there at the beginning, baby. So let's get twisted. So I'm gonna twist things around. Obviously, even more people will be like, hey, we just talked about a horror movie. Let's jump into horror news. Nah, we're gonna jump into DC news. <laughs> so of course the biggest thing going on in DC news is that James Gunn, of course, continues to be the talk of DC, and he recently um, took to his social media saying, quote, anyone who says they know anything about anything in the future DCU is bullshitting, because right now there's only me and Peter Safran. Um, so yeah, I'm glad he's taking that on, because a lot of people have been speculating and saying, this is what's going to happen in the DCU, and the DCU is doing this, and yada, yada, yada. Nah, James Gunn and Peter got that thing locked up and they know what's going on there so you know normal people just yeah kind of like the wrestling world where they make up shit that's going on you know um let's see james gunn also been teasing us man he's been teasing with the social media with some dc characters he's been posting some random images uh the first day that he officially took over as the co-ceo he posted an image of uh, clark kent uh, Superman, of course, uh, he's since then he's posted an image of Mr. Terrific uh, without any explanation. He's posted an image of Dead Man without any speculation. And he has uh, most recently posted Lobo, which is a character that uh, fans have been clamoring to see for quite some time. Uh, and they're wanting Jason Momoa to play the character. And I think Jason Momoa wants to play the character. Don't know how that works with him playing Aquaman, but... I mean, hey, why not? You got this Flash film coming out. You can do all kinds of crazy things with that. So why not? <laughs> Have some fun with it. I don't even know what the the Snyder of it all is going to be once we get into going forward and all that. I don't know what the future of Aquaman is. I, I have no idea. I'm really not paying any attention to that Aquaman film. So I couldn't tell you what's going on there. But it's fun, man. It's fun that James Gunn's teasing people. It could be just him having fun, just throwing people off the... Off the uh, off the scent, if you will, but these having fun, man. If we see these characters, cool. I mean, these are characters we haven't really seen, so they. I mean, obviously, except for Clark Kent, we've seen Clark Kent plenty, and I'm um, no problem with that, man. I'm so glad Henry Cavill is doing his thing, but 
we'll see where it goes, man. We'll see where it goes. Speaking of Clark Kent, Amy Adams was recently asked about uh, the return of Superman and if she's going to be returning as Lois Lane. Uh, she first said, I am, quote, quote, I'm thrilled for Cavill. He's such a wonderful Superman, so I'm very excited for him. Which is great. You know, it's nice to see that love there uh, for Amy Adams, who, of course, played Lois in the uh, Man of Steel and Batman vs. Superman and Justice League films. And then, of course, she was asked if she'd be returning as Lois, to which she said, quote, They haven't spoken to me about it. If it's me, great. If it's somebody else, the role of Lois has been filled by so many wonderful actresses in the past, so I'll support whatever direction they go in. And I'll be fine if they bring Amy Adams back as Lois Lane. She's a fantastic actress, to say the least. And, you know, if they want to bring her back, more power to them. Uh, you know, again, I kind of briefly mentioned there, I don't know what the remnants of the Snyderverse will be and this new DCU as they're moving forward, but, uh, you know, I'm fine with Amy Adams coming back as Lois Lane. That wouldn't be a problem at all in my book. You know, while we're talking to Amy Adams, fun little uh, Easter egg, if you will, involving Amy Adams is she is in the film Tenacious D in the Pick of Destiny. So if you want to, you know, Watch that movie, which you should. Fantastic freaking film. Good time. fun, Good fun times there. Uh, go over there and check that movie out and try to find Amy Adams. She is in the film. All right, let's jump over to horror news as the biggest news in horror that has happened since the last time we talked is that Jason Blum and James Wan, two of the biggest names in horror currently, are apparently in talks to merge their companies, that being Blumhouse Productions and Atomic Monster. Uh, they're looking, I mean, that's going to be one big horror producing machine right there. Um, quote, we really do complement each other, yin and yang, which is part of what makes this so exciting, end quote, was what uh, James Wan said. To the New York Times. Uh, after merging, the parties are expected that Atomic Monster and Blumhouse will continue to operate as separate labels, with each maintaining its own creative and brand identity. Atomic Monster is expected to utilize the existing Blumhouse infrastructure to further scale their activities in film, TV, and new content areas. Uh, the idea behind the alliance is to increase the output from each side which is insane to think about because Blumhouse does a lot of stuff. Um, they also hope to expand into horror-related games, which, oh my god, a Blumhouse and freaking Atomic Monster-related horror video game? Like, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I'll take that in a heartbeat, as long as it's not first-person, because, you know, screw that. Uh, live entertainment and audio, Blumhouse and Atomic Monster have already collaborated with each other, and we will see that in the upcoming film Megan. That is, of course, the thriller with the doll that dances. Um, <laughs> does look like it's going to be a good movie. Uh, that's releasing January 6, 2023. Uh, you know, entertaining movie. You know, we'll, we'll hold the word good <laughs> until we see the movie, but it does look, it does have the chance to be a, a solid film, especially start out the year, January 6, 2023. We're kicking it off with a freaking robotic killing doll. Why not? A lot of parallels between that and the uh, Child's Play movie that came out in 2018, 2019. I lose track of numbers uh, in years, but uh, I, I can see the parallels between those two movies, but interested, very interested in that movie. And glad they're working together. I mean, go ahead, Blumhouse and Atomic Monster working together. I mean, jeez, that's going to be interesting. All right, let's see. Uh, speaking of video games, horror video games, super massive games, you know you know, I love them. So anytime I get news revolving them, I talk it. Uh, they are currently developing another Dark Pictures anthology game, which is set in space this time. A uh, trailer for that game will appear at, and does appear at the end of the Dark Pictures The Devil in Me video game. And it will act as season two of the Dark Pictures anthology, as The Devil in Me is the season finale for the Dark Pictures anthology. Got more power to them, man. I'm so glad they're doing this stuff. I've mentioned it several times. Till Dawn is one of my all-time favorite video games. And I'm just so glad they're doing these Dark Pictures anthologies and just keep them coming, man. The more the merrier. You know, you want to you wanna keep making these games, I'll keep playing them, baby. Especially on this PS5 I'm getting. Oh, yeah. So excited about that PS5, man. All right, so that does it for horror news. Let's jump into the regular movie news. Um, uh, starting off with Ralph Fiennes. You know him as Lord Voldemort. Uh, and he is, of course, starring in The Menu, which is in theaters now. Uh, he has expressed his interest in reprising his villainous role in The Wizarding World, saying, quote, sure, of course, um, when he was talking Variety, when he was asked if he would play Voldemort again, if Warner Brothers or J.K. Rowling called him to join 
future Harry Potter projects. Fine said he would jump right in, no question about it. Cool, man. I, I don't know what the plan... Obviously, I don't know what the plan is for the Wizard League World because I'm not there. Uh, it does seem like things have been put on a hold there. Uh, we don't know if there will be another Fantastic Beast film at the moment. There's been talks. Obviously, I talked about it on a more recent episode of my show about how David Zaslav said he definitely wants to get the Wizarding World and DC going. So he's obviously going to be working on the Wizarding World and treating that off, planned out and figured out, and where they're going to go from there. I don't know what a Voldemort story is. Uh, that's been pretty much wrapped up. Uh, if they want to do more with the character or restart, I don't know. I have no idea where they go with that. But I do know one thing. I will freaking watch it. Love me some Wizarding World, man. Let's see. Quentin Tarantino has been pretty active recently. I think it book tour, I want to say it is. So uh, he, he went on record saying Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, his most recent film is his best work. And that is according to him. That's straight from Quentin Tarantino. He said Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is his best work, which I do enjoy that film. I enjoy that film a lot. It's a very good film. Uh, is it my favorite Tarantino movie? Eh, not at the moment. I mean, give it some time. The more I watch it, maybe it could, but uh, Death Proof has been my favorite Quentin Tarantino movie since I saw uh, first saw it. So, uh, Death Proof, fantastic movie. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. I like to say the word fantastic. Uh, <laughs> but I like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And again, this is from Quentin Tarantino himself, so it doesn't matter what we have to say about what his best film is. Quentin Tarantino said that's his best work, so there you go. Uh, he's also disclosed that he plans on stepping into the television realm and shooting an eight-episode series in 2023. Um, currently, he did not give us any narrative or production details about that project, so we'll see where that goes, and I'll keep you posted on news going forward, but... You know, that's that's where they're at with that. He also said something about Marvel stars are not Hollywood stars or they're not movie stars or something like that. A lot of people have been talking badly about comic book movies lately. Which, you know, I mean, there's been a couple of directors. Obviously, Martin Scorsese probably the the biggest one, but, you know, Tarantino's jumped in there as well. He didn't really say he doesn't like Marvel movies. He just, you know, said they're not stars. <laughs> um, he said... Basically, what he was kind of getting at um, is that uh, the star of the film is Captain America, not Chris Evans. Uh, Thor, not Chris Hemsworth. Things of that nature. Which I, I think is understandable to a degree. I mean, you're going to a film to see those characters. But I, I, they're portrayed by the actors. And the actors are giving them uh, something as well. So I think the actors are doing their job. You know, So I guess I, I would disagree with Quentin Tarantino there. Um, with all due respect, obviously, they have a lot of respect for Quentin Tarantino, and he's even said himself that, he, you know, he's getting to that age now where he's, you know, old man yells at something, so, you know, more power to him, I think, it's, there's no hate towards Quentin Tarantino, he's, he's doing his thing, and, you know, but it, there's, there's that feeling with comic book movies now, that it's becoming like uh, the musicals back in the day, or even the westerns back in the day, where it's becoming oversaturated and everything is comic book related, and it's like, uh, when is this trend gonna wear out and you know honestly I don't think it is those movies are still making a lot of money and you know I mean both brands and DC's rebuilding and there's a lot of hope there and you know Marvel's still kicking ass so I don't know man it's <laughs> I don't think they're going away anytime soon so these these classic directors need to get used to these films being out there uh, you know and I'm still seeing people saying uh, streaming services shouldn't count maybe it was was it steven spielberg that said that i, I don't know uh but i saw i saw a quote saying that they they don't know if streaming movies should count as movies uh they should count more as tv shows because they're on tv um i don't agree with that either a movie is a movie uh any way you put it so i don't know man it's a weird world we're leaving living in where the classic directors, and again, all due respect, I love, freaking love Steven Spielberg, of course, you know, Dress Park's my all-time favorite film, but, yeah, some things these people are saying I just don't agree with, but that's fine, we're not going to agree with everything somebody says, you know, you just, you just go out there, and you, you do your thing, and you support their, their films, and if you don't want to support their films, fine, it's your choice, but, you know, 
I'm obviously always going to support Steven Silberg. I'm always interested to see what Quentin Tarantino's got going on. Martin, Martin Scorsese's classic man. Whether they like they like comic book movies or streaming films, beyond the point to me. And I think they've all earned their right to speak their opinion with the you know legends that they are of the film world. All right, let's see. Uh, Chris Hemsworth uh, taking a break from acting after a recent health. Um, revelation. Wishing him the best there. Uh, and uh, um, following that announcement, he's also revealed he's ready to close the book, it seems, on Thor. He even said close the book, and the quote, uh, saying, Chris Hemsworth said, quote, I feel like we'd probably have to close the book if I ever did it again. You know what I mean? Uh, I feel like it's probably warrants that. I feel like it'd probably be the finale, but that's not based on anything anyone's told me or any sort of plans. You have this birth of a hero, the journey of a hero, then the death of a hero, and I don't know. Am I at that stage? Question mark. Who knows? So, you know, obviously he's taking a break from acting, which is fine. Um, You know, he's been playing the character for, the Thor character for so long. Um, You know, he's probably about ready for that character to come to an end. I mean, when you think about it, I mean, Robert Downey Jr. is Iron Man, no longer there. Uh, Chris Evans is Captain America, no longer there. Uh, Scarlett Johansson is Black Widow, no longer there. Uh, he's still got Hawkeye, but you don't know what, I mean, what is Hawkeye anymore? You know, he's, you know, <laughs> I mean, now that they introduced Kate Bishop, who, I don't know what the plan for Hawkeye is. Um, who else? Hulk. Hulk's always been kind of a side character for this Marvel Universe. Uh, you know, film rights and all that stuff, but I mean, it just... Seems like he's just the side character at this point. And then you got Thor. And, you know, he had a film come out earlier this year. And, you know, at the end of that film, they announced uh, Thor will return. Uh, which was a surprise to Chris Hemsworth and Taka Uh They didn't know anything about that going into it. So now they're wondering about where to go there. And it sounds like Chris Hemsworth is probably about ready to wrap it up. And... You know, I don't know if we get another Thor film, to be honest with you. I think, I think, you know, you've got what? You've got the Kang, the Kang movie and the, uh, geez, Secret Wars coming up. I mean, you probably see Thor's character end in one of those movies, right? I mean, we'll see where it goes. You know, Marvel's got a plan and an idea, and if he's ready to put the hammer down, if you will, uh, you know, Stormbreaker, Stormbreaker, a hammer, an axe, it's an axe, right, both, I don't freaking know, <laughs> but let it be, man, let it be, he's done a great job as Thor, I, you know, I won't deny that at all, um, good on him, you know, good on him, big bucket of win for, you know, everything he's done so far in his career, and, you know, he deserves a break. Why not? He deserves a break. Let's see. And last bit of news already. Jeez, I'm moving by quicker than I expected. All right. Uh, Deadpool Christmas. Very Deadpool Christmas, maybe. Eventually happening down the line. Um, Ryan Reynolds was talking recently while doing press for his latest movie, which is a Christmas movie uh, starring him and Will Ferrell, which I will never see because it is an Apple movie. Um, but he didn't mention that uh, when talking Deadpool, that he said, quote, I would love to see a song and dance number in a Deadpool movie. Also went on to say, quote, four years ago, Rhett Reese, Paul Wernick, and I wrote a Christmas movie starring Deadpool, but it got lost in the shuffle of the Disney acquiring Fox, and it never got made. Then he goes on to continue to add, say, quote, maybe one day we'll get to that, get to make that movie. It's not a musical, but it's a full Deadpool Christmas movie, so one day, end quote. Now, we know that we have a Deadpool movie coming, uh, Deadpool 3, with him and uh, Hugh Jackman back as Wolverine, which is going to be a great fun time. Uh, that will be Deadpool's introduction to the MCU, and I think after that, we do get a Christmas thing with Deadpool. I don't think this is out of the lines by any means, or extremely impossible, or anything like that. You know, obviously, you wouldn't want your first introduction of Deadpool and the MCU to be a Christmas movie. I mean, be very Deadpool. It's so out of, you know, out of left field that it's like, oh man, that'd be insane. But I don't think it's unlikely. And the reason I say that is we have Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special coming up. So, 
who's to say after Deadpool 3 happens, you don't get a Christmas special, you know, right after it. I mean, who's to say that can't happen? Like, and it could be a good fun time. I mean, Ryan Reynolds is killing it as Deadpool. Like, he just kills that role. So, I mean, I'm sure he can nail a Christmas special. And you got Disney behind it and all that stuff. Man, that would be a great... That could be good, man. That could be really good. And this Christmas special, the Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas special, or holiday special, whatever you want to call it, looks great. Looks like it's going to be a good time. And I've been very positive about Marvel on this episode today. I just realized that. Um, I, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. Nah, I kid. I like some Marvel stuff. But, there you go. That's all the news. Wow. Talk the news. Talk the uh, review of the movie, which again, Smile. Streaming now, Paramount Plus still in some theaters, it looks like. Uh, check it out. It's worth the check out, especially if you have Paramount Plus. Go ahead, boys. Not too bad. Uh, good little mystery thriller film there. Now, I'm trying to think if there's any other news. I guess we're on the Disney train. We can talk about this. Indiana Jones 5 uh, will have some de aging going on in it. Uh, not throughout the whole movie, from what I understand. I think it's just like the opening of the film to kind of catch you up. Uh, through the decades or something like that, from what I read, if I read that correctly. <laughs> Fine. I still have no idea what this movie's going to be. <laughs> um, but, you know, again, good saying to say here is more power to them. Whatever they want to do with it, let them do with it. You know, we'll see where it all ends up going from there. All right, I think I get all the news. You know, I'm kind of just looking for something else to talk about before jumping into the, uh, the dreaded news and thing I'm going to do here at the end of this episode, which I'm still wishing was not true. So, uh, yeah, over the weekend, we lost um, a hero to a lot of kids like myself who grew up in the 90s. Um, uh, Jason David Frank passed away, uh, uh, which is believed to be uh, suicide. Um, no official cause of death has fully been revealed yet, but that is the belief. Um, if you don't know who Jason David Frank is, he uh, shot to stardom in the 90s by playing the character of Tommy Oliver, uh, the Green Ranger, and then becoming the White Ranger on the very successful Mighty Morphin Power Rangers television show that spun off into movies. Uh, he reprised the role of Tommy Oliver in other seasons of the Power Rangers and continued the legacy of the uh, Power Rangers throughout his uh, life, gone too short. Uh, doing comic conventions and uh, you know, working on uh, the film The Legend of the White Dragon, which has not been released. Looks like it's going to be released. Uh, well, scheduled to release 2023. We'll see where that ends up going now with uh, the sad loss here. But um, yeah, like I mentioned, he was a hero for us 90 kids, especially for me. Uh, I mean, that was, you know, I, I made a little post on my social media is like, that was my first introduction to like superheroes, the Power Rangers. And that was my dude, man. Of course I had a huge crush on the pink Power Ranger. Love the pink Power Ranger and all that. But the person I looked up to and wanted to be was freaking Tommy Oliver. I mean, he's so cool. And just seeing that character and the green Ranger and the awesomeness and the dagger and the freaking dragon sword and all that stuff. He's like, Oh, that's so cool. And then, you know, he becomes the white Ranger with the freaking Falcon and the, the white tiger and all that stuff. You're like, this is so cool, man. Again, Tommy's so cool. And he's like, you know, one of the reasons I grew my hair and I've had long hair, I just recently cut it. Cause I like to donate my hair. That's why I grow it out. But you know, part of in the process of growing my hair out is, you know, people that I've always thought were cool and looked up to. And, you know, Tommy Oliver being one of those, uh, people, um, man, tough to talk about, dude. You know, this coming, what, a week after we lost Kevin Conroy, uh, you know, recently lost Scott Hall, who was a huge part of my life, uh, the first wrestler I ever was a fan of, and then now first favorite superhero is gone, and of course there's more important things than that in the world, you know, you know, daughters have lost their father, and all that stuff, it's just, it's, a uh, it's a tough situation, you know. Uh, he just seemed like a good guy. Anything I ever saw of him, because I always tried to keep up with him again as a fan of his from back th back then, and you know, seeing all the stuff he's done, the Bat in the Sun stuff, where he's reprised the role of uh, the White Ranger against Scorpion, and then he did the uh, Green Ranger against 
was it Raikou or Roku or Raikou, I think. Um, just cool videos and all that stuff. And again, the way he always kept uh, the property going and, you know, showed the love and support for that franchise that helped make him a star. You know, obviously he was great in martial arts and, you know, helped build schools for kids to go learn, learn the art. And then, you know, again, at the comic convention, you see him talk to the kids and, that's the stuff that broke me today. Like, I was in shock when I heard the news, and then, you know, just today scrolling through, you know, Instagram or TikTok and seeing all the tributes from, you know, the previous cast members. I mean, oh, my God, Amy's post just freaking destroyed me. Amy, Joe Johnson, who played the Pink Ranger, and those two were close, and they were doing comic conventions together. And her post today, oh, my God, that broke me for a little bit. And then, you know, seeing all the TikTok tributes and the videos of him, with kids at the comic conventions and all that stuff. It's just, oh, God, it's heartbreaking. You know, I'm looking across the room as I'm recording this, and I've got, you know, the Power Rangers poster over there with the White Ranger dead in the center, you know, surrounded by... God, dead in the center sounds horrible. You know what I mean. Um, surrounded by the Funko Pops, uh, you know, Green Ranger, White Ranger. I've got the Green Ranger toy from my childhood over there. you got this awesome White Ranger toy that my brother... Uh, Tombstone Josh gave me for Christmas last year with Jason's signature on it. So, oh man. All right, cherish that thing forever now. Just, you know, even more so. And it just, it's sad, man. It is, it's sad. And if it was suicide as it's being um, reported, like that's even, yeah, you just hate to think about what these people are going through in their final battles. You know, suicide's a tough thing. It's something I've been on the brink of several times. More times than I like to remember. It's just, it's a tough thing. You know, life gets to you sometimes. You just gotta, you gotta get through it sometimes. You know, it's the best. That's why I end this show, every episode, I end the show with that quote that I end it with. Because, you know, it's a reminder that, yeah, life, life gets hard. But, you turn on the light, man, and you can... You can get through it, you know, just if you're going through some tough things, reach out to a buddy, reach out to a friend, reach out to anybody. There's there's help out there, you know, to get through it. Suicide is, it's tough, you know, it's, you don't have to go there. You know, I know it gets hard, trust me, I know it gets hard. Just gotta, gotta keep fighting, man, you know, it just, so sad, it's just all of it's sad. So, you know. Throw on a, throw on an old episode of the Power Rangers. It's on Netflix. You know, I just have some good time celebrating them. You know, look up those Bat in the Sun videos with him on it. Look up him at Comic Cons. It's just it's the person he was, and celebrate his life. And like I said, there's memories and tributes all over TikTok for him, and you know, Instagram and the social medias. He deserves it. I mean, God, another thing that just absolutely broke me was seeing you know a picture. Of him and Toy, and you know, I shared that myself. I mean, Toy, we lost her a number of years ago in a car accident. It's just, man, you get older and your, you know, your heroes you grew up watching are going away, and it's just freaking. I want to end the show on such a somber note, but I had to play tribute to him because he's such a huge part of my life. Like freaking, again, first ever, like superhero. I looked up to for, and you know always followed him throughout his career so so sad to see him go again uh, if you're going through anything in your life seek help it's okay don't worry nobody nobody's gonna look down on you if you need help we all need help sometimes in life so uh, look for that help if you're going through a tough time it's it's a struggle I understand the struggle it gets tough it gets very tough but you can get through it man you all can get through it you can fight, you can survive, you can scratch, you can crawl, you can get through it, trust me. Um, so again, you know, throw on some Power Rangers, rock the theme song, look up some classic videos, celebrate his life, because he, uh, he was a good dude, man. And, man, ended the show on a somber note, but like I said, I had to pay tribute to that man. You know, there's no way I couldn't pay tribute to him. So, thank you Jason David Frank for all you gave me. I know you're looking down on... You know, all of the people who loved you and supported you throughout the years, we're going to keep loving and supporting you. And uh, whatever your daughter does, if she continues acting, all that stuff, man, we're going to support and keep the Ranger thing going, man. Because once you're a Ranger, always a Ranger. We love you. Hope you and Toy are having a good uh, 
reintroduction up there, celebrating. And, uh, yeah. So, that's going to end it for this show, man. Again, hate to leave it on summer note, but had to pay tribute to him. You got your news, you got your review, you got some good times there. We'll be back with next week's episode. Going to talk some Wednesday on the show, I'm sure. Talk about my interaction with the PS5 if I ever get the freaking thing in my hands. <laughs> um, you know, and remember, as always, happiness can be found even in the darkest of times if one remembers to turn on the light. Talk to you all next episode. Well, hang on, man. Before we close out the show, God, like I said, weird headspace. Um, Throw Me Podcast Network, man. This show is a part of the Throw Me Podcast Network. Uh, be sure to give us a like and follow and subscribe over on the YouTube, uh, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, all that good stuff. We got the good shows going on over there. Uh, good fun times with my uh, Morphin crew, if you will, over here. Our group of Power Rangers, man. Um, we're <laughs> we're we're. We're doing the thing. We got a lot of stuff going on. We got some shows coming out. We got new episodes every week from, uh, of course, my show. You've got the Tombstone Josh with the freaking metal groove, man. You've got the Mr. Wonderful show. You've got Improper Guidance. Uh, you got some other things cooking, man. We got some things going on over there. So, again, that's Throw Me Podcast Network. Give us a uh, like and subscribe and a share, please, man. We would gladly appreciate it. There we go. Now we can close this thing out. Thank you for listening to the show. Um, thank you for uh, listening to me pay tribute to a hero and um, listening to my reviews and news. We'll uh, be back with next week's episode. Appreciate you all. Again, happiness can be found even in the darkest of times if one remembers to turn on the light. Talk to you all next week. Thank you for joining me this week. Make sure you hit the subscribe button to get updates on all new episodes. As well, follow me on Twitter at review underscore it underscore Rob. Stay tuned for more adventures.